is they basically said the following thing. Well, it is divine because heaven has decreed that it is time for us to change. Our civilization has reached the edge because we have been forced by the powers that be by this cabal to maintain a certain degree of technology which benefits them, not the planet, not the people who live on it. Secondly, there is going to be this galactic option that I've been talking about. First contact. We actually get to meet people from other places who have come here to help us. And then three, that you were talking about, we are men, as I've been saying, to become fully conscious beings. One of the translations from the Syrian of what we're talking about, being a language of Sirius B in space, is physical angels. And that's a word that they have told me to mention again and again and again. We are physical angels. What does that mean? Physical angels are beings that are fully conscious. In other words, as I've been talking about, they're beings that have combined the spiritual essence of all knowledge and the physical essence of all knowledge together and that they are here to act as intermediaries between the greater spiritual heaven and its hierarchies and what go, what's going on in our physical reality. So we are part of this angelic hierarchies. We are the physical aspect of it. And there's several levels of it. We have physical beings ourselves. The next level is what we call here on this planet the ascended masters. And then the final level are more spiritual, what I call the higher level spiritual beings, which exist throughout all the galaxies. And so our task in all of this is to be good physical angels who are aspiring through their gathering of knowledge and wisdom to become ascended masters and move on to becoming these higher level spiritual beings that we're talking about. So we are actually at the edge of where we were as purely physical beings, beings who are able to exist somehow in physicality. But physicality has now said, our reality can no longer exist as it is. It has to change drastically. That means we as physical beings have to likewise change drastically. So that means we have to go through a series of incredible changes. And to do that, we need mentors. We need to understand why this is happening people who can explain how this happens, people who can then, once this happens to us, help us understand what I like to call the etiquette of being a physical angel. What is it that you would do? How do you receive your information? How do you take the vast amount of data that you're totally, every second, thrown at you and maintain within it what I like to call a creative sanity? And so that's why the space beings are here. They're actually our space family. They are here to reunite with us. And there's another level of this, which is, which we haven't really talked about much, which is in Earth itself. Namely, that planets are entirely different than what our geology talks about, that they actually have, in the middle of them, a great space, an inner Earth, an inner Mars, whatever. And so, when you begin to see all of this, you see that then there are rules, there are laws about how the physical universe operates and how the spiritual realities interact with it. And as you begin to understand this more and more, you see without going into a large endless lecture about what is going on, you begin to see that there is a natural order. And so the key to this is to go inside, to look at your, once again, your intuitive energies and just go with the flow of all this. Accept the fact that you are in the middle of a divine intervention. A major part of that divine intervention is first contact. And another major part of that divine intervention is transforming us from being who we are now to reachieving, reconnecting with who we are on all levels. In other words, our full potentialized self. And this is our physical angelness, so to speak. And so, as you begin working through and understanding the nature of yourself, expanding outward in search, looking at your cultural aspects, reacting with one another, developing more and more acceptable communities that are into creative solutions of problems, and knowing that we are not alone, you begin 
to develop an inner feeling of peace and of joy. That's why I always, when I see pictures of Ascended Masters, they're always having deep within themselves a great joy. And the great joy is, I am able at all times to gather any knowledge that I need and that I have a oneness with the energies of heaven and with the energies of physicality. And that energy, that highest level of energy, is joy, laughing joy. As a matter of fact, the only time that a limited conscious being, a physical being, is in oneness with its entire body is when you are hilariously laughing like crazy. It's probably no accident that there's some pretty good evidence that quite a few people that have become illuminated mm -hmm. and woke up, the first thing they did was start laughing. Exactly, exactly. And people have been able to uh, laugh their way out of the most serious diseases. When we let go of all the quote-unquote seriousness of what we believe is going on in our world and begin to use our intuitive energies to create our inner joy and use that joy to understand the world, that's what comes out, joy. And the, other, and the highest level of joy is laughter. Yeah, it's funny too because when you laugh, you, you produce inner leukin too, right. which is your first line of defense against cancer and right. several other diseases. Exactly. You know, I was um, reading some genetic information, and there's a correlation between what you're talking about and this information. It said that six, five or six percent of the population that they've researched are genetically very, very dissimilar from the general population. And on further research, that five or six percent of people lacked the ability to have compassion and empathy. And I remember reading something where you were writing that 95% of us will make it. And it almost seems like there is a, a tiny section of this population that have been, um, I don't know, I hate to say that they're soulless or spiritless, but it's, it's like they completely lack empathy and compassion and understanding for their fellow human being, which allows them to work with these darker forces to rise to the top because they have no uh, feelings about whoever they are walking on. What do you have to say about that? Well, yes, they, some people have that, but beneath every human being is a basic genetic aspect that ties us in with everybody else and is about us all being one. Even those people that were notorious in the history of our planet have had periods where they have shown some degree of compassion. So what we have to to realize is, oh yes, there are people that totally have developed this talent, if you want to call it that, to be massively disconnected from any kind of seeming empathy feelings and are just, to use the old expression, rotten to the core, so to speak. They actually have, even within them, periods when they have compassion when they have feelings for somebody, when they understand certain things. But, of course, once they do that, they have the ability to turn it off. What I'm believing and what I've been told is that when you reach that level of higher consciousness, that ability to turn it off goes away. You are compassionate. Compassion is the highest levels of caring for one another. It's natural. It's just as common in human beings. It may not seem openly in a lot of people, but it is as common as exists in every human being the need, let's say, to eat something at a certain time of day or a need to go to sleep at a, for a certain time every day. This is a basic aspect of who and what we are. It exists universally. So I say, yes, there are people who are playing roles where they are massively being the villain in the whole process, but they have the capability to change, which is why many, many religions, as their, one of their basic concepts, is about forgiveness. Being able to forgive, being able to understand that that person who's done this ridiculous crime to somebody that's akin of yours is a person who is capable with certain degrees of change within his genetic and others' makeups 
to become as compassionate as the most kindest, loving person you ever knew. So it's there, but these people serve a role. When you have a, when you have a society based upon a certain level of what I might call darkness, it needs adherence to carry out that particular aspect. And these are those people that came here by reincarnating again and again, came here to create this energy. And I believe also that many people have come here and done this in one lifetime and come back and been the religious martyrs who are totally into helping and caring for other people to the point where it leads to their death or some excruciating part of their lifetime, that this is happening. <clears throat> so it's not forever. It's not forever. I, I can relate to what you're saying because I, looking back at my life, I, I wasn't born a, a really high moralistic person. I did things in my youth that I wouldn't do now. And the reason I can't do them now is because of information. And sometimes when I was reading some of your information on the website, it almost seemed catalytic in nature because once you start letting information in, it causes something to happen and you can no longer do some of the things that you were allowed to do before because of whatever, you know, you had sleep or your innocence. Or, but after that innocence has woke up, we, we do become a different human being. Right, I totally agree.